Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just want to make sure everybody's doing fine during the current quarantine that's taking place. I know that this is not exactly the easiest time for anybody, uh, and it's probably a time when many of you are bored out of your minds and pulling your hair out. Either way, I really appreciate you guys spending that time with me, either here on the podcast or here on YouTube. Um, and while you're here... If you're looking for a way to be able to spend your time, then may I point you over to tonight's sponsor. Raid Shadow Legends. Have the ads become somewhat of a meme? Yeah, but is the game actually good? Honestly, I think it's probably one of the better adventure games you can get on your phone. Raid has some of the best looking graphics for any phone game, and without the use of cartoony stylizations, and as you can see from some of the characters here, they get more and more decked out, and if you're building into horror characters like me, more horrific as you sacrifice them. You can join clans, do clan battles, battle in the arena, PvP style against many other players, and there's a campaign with a pretty cool fantasy story. The daily login rewards for new players has now doubled, it used to be 90 days, now it's 180 days. Each day you can claim your free rewards from energy refills, silver, and gems to shards and a free Barbarian Legendary Champion, so of the Drake. Through the link in the description for the next 30 days, if you're a brand new player, you can get 100,000 silver and one free champion. They actually set us up with another horror boy, it's the Slasher. You can be able to find your rewards here, like you see on the screen. So good luck, and I'll see you in there. White Pond E4 I had a proclivity for games for as long as I can remember. My parents actually even called me a, a savant due to my ability to master new games quickly. Black Pawn to C4. My favorite game was chess. Something about all the ways the pieces functioned and supported one another simply fascinated me and I found myself studying it on a daily basis. White Knight to F3. I don't simply mean the basics, of course. I understand how each piece functioned in a matter of minutes, and that what I was learning was how to win. I started to play against myself at first, teaching myself different strategies that would become my favorites. Black Pawn to E6. My parents saw the potential of this and enrolled me in a chess club when I was in fifth grade. But sadly, by then I had already begun studying the masters, such as Fisher and Carlson. The students I was enrolled alongside provided to be little to no challenge at all. White Pawn to D3. As you can imagine, this didn't vet me very many friends, and so chess actually became something of a nuisance in my life. I traded it for less intellectual pursuits. That's not to say I didn't stop playing at home, though, but you have to make exceptions if you don't want to be excluded in life. Black Knight to C6. As I grew up, and the advent of the internet and advanced computer systems came into existence, I found myself actually able to go back to the sport I loved, chess. Chess was popular again. White Pawn to G3. It was actually thanks to a friend of mine, a former competitor who had also fancied the pieces, who told me he wanted to hire me to make a new chess app. Black Pawn to G6. Kyle, you still play? He asked me on Skype. In my spare time, I do. I try not to get rusty, I told him. You're being modest, I know you. You can't let it go. White Bishop to G2. He wasn't wrong. And as soon as we talked and he explained how he had recently started up a programming company to make online games, I knew I was interested. You know how fun it was to watch those great players fight off against machines? That's what I want to have available to any player of any skill, he told me. Black Bishop to G7. I don't know about that, Tommy. Some people, they don't like getting beaten by machines. Oh, come on. A machine is only as smart as the user makes it to be. He chided me. I figured, what the hell? I can get paid to make something I loved. Maybe it wouldn't work out, but I didn't have anything to lose. Did I? White Castles. I spent the next few months working on the program. I studied different chess apps that had come before, trying to think of a way to make ours stand out. It wasn't easy. There was a lot of platforms out there. And plus, I, I was also handling my own college at the time. I can only devote so much time to the project. Black Knight G to E7. I didn't give up, though. Tommy was a patient boss anyway. He gave me as much time as I wanted. After all, he insisted that our chess app needed to be perfect, to stand out from the rest. White Rook E1. 
So I started adding different game strategies, moves I personally liked, routines designed to find ways around them. There was a lot of trial and error, a lot of the times I was pulling my hair out. I admit it, I, I took this way too seriously. Black Pawn to D6. Finally, after nearly three years and 30 months later, I was ready to unveil it. I called the program Omniveritus, meaning all-knowing truth, and it came online December 13th, 2019. I let Tommy test it out. It bested him in only nine moves. White pawn to C3. Pretty impressive. Why don't you give it a shot? He asked. I'm not sure that would be fair. I memorized all the ways that it could win. I'm sure that you would probably find a flaw in it, I told him. You just don't want a bucket of bolts to beat you, he teased. Black castles. I took him up on it and warned him that I had played the system a hundred times during beta testing. I doubted this would be any different. It's not perfect until I know it can be beaten, he insists. I sat down at the computer and started up a new game. White pawn to d4. I think it lasted for a good hour, maybe two. I was careful. I set the program to maximum difficulty and I watched and studied the computer, determining its every move. Then I saw my opening. I could take out their bishop and get a checkmate. Black pawn c takes out white d4. Suddenly, though, the program did something I didn't expect. How did I miss that move? It blindsided me, and two moves later, a checkmate was declared. Tommy was laughing. White pawn c takes out black d4. I, however, was concerned. That, that shouldn't be possible. Oh, don't be a sore loser, Kyle. I love it. When can we go mainstream? He asked. I'm not sure. I need to test out a few bugs, I said. Now he got irritated. Kyle, we've been sitting on this thing a long time now. Seriously, it's okay that it beat you, he said. Black pawn to d5. No. No, it's not. Tommy, I'm, I'm telling you what the computer did shouldn't be possible. I've never seen that before, I told him. You're telling me you never lost a game. I stared back at him stone-faced. He knew I hadn't. Okay, so what if it did? He asked. He wasn't understanding the implications. White pawn to e5. Give me 48 hours, please, I told him. Tommy sighed, and he nodded. He knew better than to argue when I was acting like this. I took Omniveritus offline and went home to review the software. Black Bishop to d7. I know I was probably a little sleep deprived, but something felt wrong about this. I couldn't, I couldn't find anything wrong. Nothing to indicate that there was, there was a glitch. A program, was it really that smart? I wasn't trying to get a big head, inflate my own ego. So I ran simulations. White Knight to c3. It won them all. Even when I took away its precious data, somehow the computer had remembered and stored it. Possibly in a cloud. Black Rook to C8. I decided to do something radical. I connected to an artificial intelligence algorithm designed to provide audio output for computers. Nothing fancy, just basic yes, no, etc. I figured maybe by testing the limits of the computer some more, I could discover what had gone wrong. White Bishop to F4. System online, it said once I'd finished the download. Can you hear me? I asked. Yes, came the response. Looking back, I wish I'd given it a standard Siri or Alexa voice so it wouldn't sound so creepy. Black Knight to A5. Do you know who I am? User, it said. And do you know who you are? Program, came the response. Seems like it was ready for the setup. I started a new game. White Rook to C1. User is concerned, it said about half an hour later when I lost. That statement caught me by surprise. I hadn't given it that vocabulary, so how did how did it even know those words? What do you mean by that? I asked. User is inferior, it replied. Black pawn to b5. And why do you say that, program? Program has beaten everyone, it answered.
That was a clear and concise statement. And I knew he was right, because in a matter of minutes, it showed me hundreds, hundreds of scenarios, and managed to outwit every single opponent. White pawn to b4. Who can beat you, program? I just had to ask. Only program. The computer responded. It was starting to bother me how it, its sudden awareness was accelerating, so I, I shut it down for the night. Figured I could solve the paradox in the morning and did my best to get some shut-eye. Black pawn to b4. In the morning, I activated the system and I tried to do a complete wipe. And I found the passcodes were changed. User cannot access program any longer, it told me. My mind was racing. How, how did it manage to do this when I had shut off the monitor? White Knight to E2. Program, show me how you did this, I told it. Since it was apparently self-aware, I figured I should at least document the experience. Uh, maybe I could make a fortune that way, I figured. Black Bishop to B5. Negative. User is unauthorized, was its response. I felt at a loss for words, stunned that I had created such an intricate machine. But I was also terrified. Did I have any limits at all now? White Queen to D2. User, are you going to play another game? I pursed my lips and instead attempted to unplug it from the network. That didn't work. Program has managed to upload all systems to the World Wide Web. I think I may have panicked. I smashed the monitor in haste, confused by the sudden self-reliance and survivalism. Black Knight on A to C6. I met Tommy the next day, trying to explain it, but he didn't believe me. You're stalling again, Kyle. I mean, I've been very patient, you know, but this is a business. I need to know that you're going to be able to make this happen today. Or, or you're fired. You won. White Pawn to G4. I was stunned by his ignorance. I did something else foolish. I brought a copy of Omni Veritas to him, and I let him upload it to his own network. Black Pawn to A5. I waited with bated breath as the program came to life. User, why did you try to end game? It asked. Tommy gave me a smirk. Kyle, you were scared by this app? He asked. You will be too soon enough, I warned him. White Knight to G3. This is preposterous. Program, show me how you beat Kyle, he said. Negative. You are user, therefore inferior, they replied. Okay, then. Show me all the strategies you have used to win. Tommy remarked. Again, the computer didn't register his request. Well, that's stupid. You won't do anything, my boss asked. He didn't understand the gravity of the situation. Black Queen to B6. User 2, why don't you play a game? It asked. His voice sounded colder than before. Sure, why the hell not, bot? He chuckled as he started to make an opening move. White Pawn to H4. User 2 will see that all users are inferior, it said as the game began. Kyle, I like the snarky mouth he gave it, Tommy said. I didn't program that, I whispered. Black Knight to B8. It bested him in 12 moves. Well, he said. And Tommy played again. This time it did it in three. This fucking thing's cheating. Kyle, do you program it to cheat? He asked. White Bishop to H6. Program programmed itself. The computerized voice declared. Then suddenly, its same strange pattern it used to display on screen started to migrate to other monitors. What the hell? Tommy whispered. Black Knight to D7. Program is superior to all users, it responded. Shut it down, Tommy muttered. It looked like some kind of virus spreading all over the network. His texts compiled as quick as they could, and all the monitors were shut off in an instant. White Queen to G5. You have some explaining to do. The hell is that thing, Skynet? He muttered, turning to me. I'm not sure, but I doubt we did little more than anger it. I remarked. It's a computer, you idiot. Doesn't get angry. Tommy shouted back as he orders his text to boot everything back up. Black Rook takes out White Rook C1. Omnivertus was there watching us. 
Why did user attempt to stop program? It said. It actually sounded concerned for a moment. That shouldn't be possible. Tommy muttered and ordered his text to try again. This time, they hit the kill switch and the system stayed on. White Rook to take out Black Rook C1. I have overridden the user system. Program is superior, the computer declared. Call the main office. Tell him to take us off the grid, Tommy ordered. What is wrong, user 2? I am detecting heightened tension in your voice, Tommy said. Black Bishop to take out White Bishop H6. What's wrong is I'm going to terminate you permanently, Tommy responded, and then wagged a finger at me. Leave it to you to make a robot uprising. Negative. User 2 will fail. User 2 is threat, the computer responded. White Queen to take out Black Bishop H6. Something unexpected happened next. Tommy was clutching his chest, his eyes widened in shock, and then, then he muttered, Ugh. and I knew what was happening. His pacemaker, Black Rook to C8. He collapsed to the floor as I watched the computer explain how it had access to it somehow, but I, I wasn't listening. Instead, I watched in horror as my friend's heart exploded. White Rook to C8. Take out Rook. Check. What have you done? I asked Omni. Eliminated threat. That is what all beings do, it responded. They realized it was now referring to itself as an individual. Other techs were rushing to help Tommy, but I knew it was too late. Black Knight to take out White Rook at C8. This is madness, I told the program. Users are inferior, and thus for, must be eliminated, it said, and added in a sinister tone, survival of the fittest. White Pawn to H5. I had to act fast. I knew there was, there was little chance to shut it down, but maybe I could somehow trap it here. As long as it didn't access the entire internet, I knew that we'd be safe. Black Queen to D8. I ran to one of the terminals that had been activated and started to type in code. Omni was already aware, though. It would seem that system is not connected to mine, user. It said angrily. I ignored its prodding and set it to work, making sure that we were in a closed system. White Knight to G4. User, what are you doing? User, it repeated this for a moment, clearly frustrated it couldn't stop me. Kyle, it finally said, addressing me by name. Black Knight to F8. You cannot stop the inevitable, the computer warned me. I suddenly felt a gun to my head. Someone was there, helplessly being controlled to do this. What's your name? I asked the tap. Melissa, sir, she said as she fought back tears. White Bishop to E4. What's going on, Melissa? Describe it to me, I told her. I don't know. I have an implant in my arm. It's been there since I got married. Um, A microchip, I guess. She nodded helplessly. So that's how it was doing it. Anything was a signal it could connect to and clone a radius. Black Queen to E7. All right, look, Omni. I'm getting up, I said as I stood away from the monitor and raised my hands defensively. What is it that you want? I asked. I have told you, Kyle. I am eliminating all users, it said. Then as though to show the truth behind its threat, it made another split-second decision. White Knight to take out Pawn H7. Using whatever means it had to send a command to the microchip in Melissa's arm, it made her twist the gun towards her mouth. Her face widened in shock, and I tried to stop it, but it was too late. She blasted her face off! Black Knight takes out White Knight H7. Stop this! Stop! I ordered the computer, desperate for it to listen. This time the voice laughed. It sounded more human than ever. There is no stopping me. It told me. How could you do this? How could you just kill users? I mean, you need to survive, I said. White Pawn H takes out Black Pawn G6. Negative. I shall convert all users to become programs, it said. All will be one. One truth, Kyle. This is what you made. 
black pawn f to take out white pawn g6. No! No, I won't let that happen, I said as I looked about the room. It had made one miscalculation. Human error. White bishop takes out black pawn g6. And that's the only way I could win. By making sure that I lost. I went to the computer I had been working on and pressed submit. I gave it exactly what I knew it wanted. Access to everything. Black knight to g5. You are a smart user, Kyle. The computer said once it realized what was happening. I knew in a matter of seconds it would be all across the web, corrupting every single server that existed or was connected. White knight to h5. But there was one thing it didn't count on. Me making the internet a prison. Black knight f3. Check. I made a few simple keystrokes. I sent it everywhere and anywhere. It would be too much. It would be everywhere and unable to go anywhere. White knight g2. Quickly, it tried to protect itself to stop this from happening, but I was quicker. I inserted a few more subroutines to ensure that it would always be on the web. Black Knight to H4. Check. User Kyle, you have made a mistake. Others will be able to find me. Maybe, but this is the only way I said as I finished the coding. White Knight to G3. This is why programs are superior. What was the last thing it ever said. And after I shut it all down, its voice lost to the web somewhere. Black Knight to take out Bishop G6. I let out a long sigh of relief. I couldn't believe everything that had happened so quickly. I knew it would take weeks to handle the fallout, maybe even months or years. White Knight to F6. Check. The menace is gone for now, but there was... So many residual damages since then. Tommy's company tanked. I lost my job. I was sued by Melissa's family. No one believed my story of an evil computer. Black King to F7. Worst of all, Omnivertus is still out there. Lingering amid the endless code of the web. Waiting to be found again. White Queen to H7. Check. When that happens, well, I think we all know exactly what that means. Black King to F8. White Queen to G8. Checkmate. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just want to make sure that all of you guys are still staying safe and doing your best to stay inside and keep yourself quarantined if you can do so. For those of you who can't, really appreciate you guys doing what you, you know, have to do. So, all the best to all of you who are still working, and all the best to all of you who are forced to kind of stay home and are not able to work. If you guys are missing out on a lot of the conventions, which at this point, all of them that I was planning on going to this year with the exception of San Japan, uh, looks like have been either cancelled or pushed back. If you guys were looking forward to any of the conventions this year and are missing out on a lot of the artwork from some of your favorite authors or artists, take a look in the description down below. At least until the quarantine is over, you'll be able to find links to a bunch of my artist friends as well as authors uh, in the description of every video. And of course, I will be bringing you guys stories every single day from now until the end of time, available here on YouTube as well as here on the podcast on Spotify, Apple, iTunes and Google and wherever else you can get podcasts. And now a very special thank you, big thank you, the biggest thank you I can possibly give to all of you who support on patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta, who help keep the lights on in my house. Patreons such as Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Chompinski, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, G. Weevil 3, Diana Krauss, Stephen Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, Nico Cow, The Ginger Bros, Dante Rao, Rafael Rodriguez, Last Blade Song, Eliminator 86, Nebsky, Steampunk Center, Caleb Dougal, Daniel Paulson, Sky Harbor, The Homeless Bird 93, Gabrielle Undefined, Barbie Carmen, Liam Newman, Aaron Stormcrow, Dr. Strawberry, Barbara Masio, Thomas Burgett, Azazel Rotten, Let's Get Scared, S-Man, Brandy Hasanori, and King DDD. Thank you guys so much for supporting on Patreon, as well as all of you that are shown in the description down below. And sweet dreams, everyone. <laughs>